Hello, hi, and welcome to episode number 20 of An Italian Knitted Podcast. My name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter. I am indeed Italian. I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, our daughter, and our cat. I am a software engineer and I work from home and I enjoy knitting. What a surprise. Episode 20, like the number 20, feels quite an accomplishment. It's like a round number, but I'm also celebrating my first year of having a knitting podcast and my husband actually got me a balloon. It feels quite exciting, honestly, even though the official anniversary, I think, was back in February or something like that, so a couple of months ago compared to currently when I'm filming this video, but I'll take the win and I'm happy you stuck around if you were here from the beginning or that you joined me on the way here. I also now have 5,000 subscribers, which sounds crazy as well. I have absolutely no giveaway today. I feel like when people have accomplishments that they're very proud of, they host a giveaway. However, I'm really not organized at all today and I've not planned anything, but I hope to put something together for next episode. For the time being, business as usual will go through finished objects, works in progress, and a little bit of acquisitions. Okay, let's go. The first finished object that I have, I am actually wearing it right now. And I feel like the kind of uh, still slightly damp hair adds to the beachy vibe that I wanted to convey via this cardigan. So it all works out. But this is the Corin cardigan by the Crea Bea or Rebecca Claw and it is a quite modified version. So the original design, which I test knitted for Rebecca, actually comes at about like a cropped length, like a regular cardigan slash sweater, sweater, sweater length, that it's maybe slightly cropped. However, I made it quite longer for a beachy vibe. I'm not 100% sure that it comes across as a beach cardigan because I've not wore it at the beach yet. I like over the past couple of weeks it has not been the best weather. We're still in like early spring, not actual summer. So we'll see when I put it in action at the beach if it does feel like a beachy cardigan, but that was the intent, so I made it longer and I also did an eye cord as the edge here instead of ribbing, which is what the pattern would recommend for the sleeve ribbing situation. The pattern itself has option for like your typical round neck or for a v-neck, which is what I followed for this heavily modified cardigan. And for the sleeves, it has short sleeves or long sleeves instructions, and the ribbing is in both versions. So the eye cord is just something that I made up, an easy modification that you can always make to any of your sleeves. Yes, and it was so fun to knit. I would say the body went actually much faster than these teeny tiny sleeves, because I think this lace pattern it's perfect to knit flat, as in it just like you go back and forth, back and forth, and it's very mindless for being lace. I mean, it's not garter stitch, so you don't just knit, 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 knit. But it is like quite easy to read your stitches from the row before the one that you're working and you can always read your stitches quite well. If you don't want to read your knitting, you can actually make a note on a little piece of paper or on your phone of what row in the pattern repeat that you're on so that you just kind of look at the piece of paper and you're like, okay, I need to do this row in the pattern repeat and then you can do that too if you're not super comfortable in reading your knitting, but yeah. So I would recommend it for like a first lace pattern. 
I'm not an experienced lace knitter or anything like that, so I don't know if my opinion counts as much, but I meant to say that I've done other lace patterns that were more complicated. Hang on. I have them there laying down in a box underneath my desk, so it was easy for me to pull them out. But examples of what I mean by like lace that you need to pay a lot of attention to, exhibit number one. It is a beautiful, lovely, like, camsole. I do not remember the name of this one, but it'll be on the screen. But the lace pattern here, it is more complicated to keep in mind, and you will need to look at the pattern to, to know what you need to do next. And same for the Whitmore sweater, for example. This is a beautiful pattern and it's quite fun, but you need to look at the chart or the pattern instructions to know what row needs to be worked on next. However, with the cord cardigan, you don't have to do that. So if you don't like to be reading your pattern and like pay close attention to the piece of paper or your phone screen to know what row needs to be worked on next, you just read your stitches and know what row you need to work. And the pattern is already out. It has been out for, I think, at least a couple of weeks. I'm pretty sure. So on Ravelry or Instagram, you'll find lots of finished objects, pictures, and inspiration for yarn ideas, colors, lengths, different combinations of neck styles and sleeve lengths, all the inspiration you need. I chose to make mine in Sanders Garnline. And Sandes Garnline is definitely like a spring and summer yarn because that's what I wanted to use for this very open and flowy and spring and summer appropriate cardigan. And Sandes Garnline has 110 meters per 50 grams. I used six balls for my size, so 660 meters. So yeah, I think the yarn went a long way with this pattern, again, because it has holes, so it makes sense that you can use a little bit less yarn than if you were to knit a more dense and compact fabric. So I think it's good. So if you don't have a lot of yarn and you're looking for a pattern to knit, maybe take a look at this in your size and see how much yardage is required because you might be surprised that you don't actually need that much. As a fan fact, not a fun fact, as a fact, as a tidbit of information, Six balls of Sadness Garnline are what took me to knit a peacock tee, which is a short sleeves tee with like a regular length for the body. So these two finished objects use the same amount of yarn. So with this open fabric, you can knit like quite longer or have maybe instead of a longer body, you can do longer sleeves instead for like a regular, more compact garment you would be able to just get a t-shirt, which is lovely anyway. But like I meant to say again, for the million time, that your yarn might go a longer way. And it was quite a fun knit. It was a test knit. So it's always fun to share status updates with other people, other testers on Instagram and see progress pictures from other testers. I don't know, it's always so inspiring and so motivating to see what yarns other people are using while you are all working on the same pattern. It's quite nice, I quite like that. I actually have zero test knits in progress at the moment and I would like to find a new one. So to summarize, pattern, they're recommended if you like the look of lace, but you want a quite simple pattern repeat, this should work for you. You can make it longer, shorter, long sleeves, short sleeves. You can also make it in a more wintry yarn. So I made it in linen, which is linen, viscose, and the like. There's no wool, so it's not a warm cardigan, but you can make it into a warm cardigan by choosing a yarn that it's more winter appropriate, which is, I think, what a good amount of testers have done. And Rebecca herself has knitted a couple at least that were in a wool winter type of yarn. I am wearing just a camisole, like a very basic camisole underneath. This is the cumulus top, 
by petite knit so i think it goes well on top of this type of camisoles you could wear it on top of a t-shirt or bathing suits with your drink at the beach you can clearly see that i'm manifesting i don't know if it works but we'll see moving on to the second finished object that i have this is a pretty cute pretty dang cute sweater for my daughter this is the coffee sweater mini by kfb studio and this was a test knit this was the first test knit that i've done where the pattern was for my daughter and I'm, i don't know i'm pretty excited it feels like an accomplishment and this is meant to be an oversized children's pattern. So I knitted size three years old for my daughter. She'll be three in July and she's also quite petite. So the three years old is actually meant to be a oversized feeling and fit on her. And it looks better and cuter when you have oversized clothes, I think, on children but also so that she can wear it for longer so this is actually an intention in the pattern itself i made the body actually a little bit longer than recommended and i think it fits her well enough now and it'll fit her for a longer period of time the recipient of the of the garment can wear the sleeves rolled up if they are too long for them right now which is the case for my daughter and so she's been wearing with the cuffs rolled up like so, which I think it's pretty cute. Originally, I had knit the body to the length that I thought was good enough for my daughter. My daughter is quite petite. However, after trying the sweater on and kind of really appreciating the oversized look on her, I chose to lengthen the body a little bit so that, again, she could wear it for longer. And to do so, I did not undo the fully twisted ribbing that's at the bottom because I didn't want to do so. So what I've done is I picked up stitches in the round with two quite long and thin circular needles, the ones that you would typically use for socks on magic loop. So quite long cord and thin needles. And so I picked up the right side leg of the stitches on the two rounds that were quite close to each other. I left one row in between them. I snipped a stitch in there and like I pulled apart the bottom ribbing and the body. It was quite satisfying. They were still on hold on those two very thin circular needles so they were secured and I wasn't scared but anyway when you cut your knitting is always quite like you feel empowered and strong and an independent person. And I did knit a little bit of body. So maybe like uh, three centimeters or so. If you look very closely, which I'll let you, I'll let you do just because it's you. If you look quite closely, you'll see that the last few rows before the ribbing are not actually patterned. I couldn't fit in there another repeat of the twisted ribbing. So I just did a few rows of pearls and knits, something that would fit with the look of the rest of the body, but it's not perfect if you are paying very close attention. That's okay for me. And to join the bottom ribbing again with the body, I know you can do Kitchener stitch, or grafting or something that you do with your regular sewing needle. However, I am very bad at sewing and so I didn't want to attempt that. So I wanted to stay away from sewing needle as much as possible. So after looking up on Google or on YouTube, I came across a grafting technique that's called Russian grafting that you do with your crochet hook. So you Put away your sewing needle in your Notion pouch. Don't take it out. And take your crochet hook. And with just that, you can make the grafting. And I'll show you maybe closer. If you notice, there's a little braid looking line just above the fully twisted rib at the bottom. And that 
kind of fake braid here at the bottom is the result of the Russian grafting. So if you are in need of a technique to join two pieces of knitting in the round, for example, but doesn't have to, you can look this Russian grafting up and see if you like it. I do like the result. I think it's noticeable. So if you wanted more of like a seamless grafting that no one will see ever. So maybe if you have a plain stockinette sweater, you are looking for more of a invisible grafting in that case. So maybe this technique is not the best, but if you don't need a super invisible grafting and you're, it's okay if it's more decorative line braiding looking, you can give this a try. I enjoyed the test knitting process and I think I'm looking forward to do more tiny test knits. This didn't take a lot of time, even though it has a good amount of twisted stitches in the body, sleeves, the ribbing, everything is kind of twisted rib, which is quite slow, but since you're working at a smaller scale, a smaller size, it kind of finishes up faster than if it was like an adult size garment. This pattern will be out quite soon. I'll put information in the description box below. This is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, which was for me, unfortunately, a disappointment. <laughs> I mean, my opinion doesn't matter as much in the big scheme of things, of course, but it was just that I love absolutely every single Knitting for Olive yarn that I've tried for other patterns and other projects. So they're regular merino, they're silk mohair, they're cotton merino, pure silk. So every yarn that they have works for me very well. But the heavy merino, not a thing for me, which is okay. I'm glad I tried. I have a couple of bowls left and I think I'll do like a scarf for my daughter. She really likes this ballerina pink color. She chose it herself and I'm sure she'll like a matching scarf. So maybe I'll do a Sophie mini shawl or something along those lines to finish up those two bowls of leftover yarn. Maybe a hat, something along those lines, but for her, not for me. Both because I do not love the feeling of the yarn, but also I don't, I don't love this color on me. So she'll be very happy to have another matching pink accessory to wear next winter. And finally, for finished objects, I have a couple. And this is, I think, quite different than usual. These are my own design. Oh, I think I should say they're self-drafted. I mean, I didn't publish a pattern yet or anything like it, but I do plan to publish a little free pattern on Ravelry once I'm done with writing the instructions. I will have it available in both English and Italian. So the backstory here is that I'm teaching a class next month in May in Bologna. Bologna is, I think, the closest big city to me. They have quite a lot of yarn stores and one in particular is owned by my friend Julia from Well Done. She hosts quite a few of these events, like social events, knitting retreats and the like. So this time she's hosting a yarn crawl over a weekend in May and she invited me to teach a little class. The class will be about reading patterns that are written in English. So if you're an Italian speaker, knitter, just a, an extra skill to be able to read patterns that are in English compared to just reading patterns in Italian. And I would like to teach a few tips and tricks to others. And one thing that we'll be doing during the class is we'll cast on a little summer scarf. I mean, it is a bit weird that it matches exactly the yarn that I made the corn cardigan in. So maybe I should change. Let's see. Maybe it'll look, it'll look good in the matchy matchy situation. This is a summer scarf. It has beautiful eyelets throughout. 
to go back to the self-drafting slash publishing this pattern, the reason I'm actually writing up a pattern for this is that I wanted to share with the people at the class a pattern that was easy to work on, would work well with like a thicker yarn and it left no leftovers, which is something that I hate to have leftover to deal with and something that you could easily adjust. You start knitting from a tip and you increase on both sides until you get to the middle point. And the middle point is when you've used half of your yarn. And then after that, you start decreases and you get to the other tip and you're done. This way you have no leftovers, which is something that I love. And it's also a very memorizable pattern repeat. So I made a couple of samples and this one is two skeins of Stunner's Garlene, which is the kit that we'll give to the people who come to my class. So they'll get the two balls of Stunner's Garlene and the pattern so that we can start working on it during the class. But I also made one in Knitting for Olive Compatible Cashmere, which feels and sounds so fancy. I had two bowls that I ordered together with other yarn from Knitting for Olive. I don't remember what it was that I ordered, but I was like, since I'm paying for shipping anyway, I want to order more yarn to make the shipping worth. And so I had ordered a couple of skeins of compatible cashmere and I decided to hold them together to make this. Again, same pattern. You start from one tip, you increase, increase, increase. And when you use half of your yarn, you start decreasing towards the other side. And this time around, I kind of started with a little more stitches. I don't know if I love it. I think I like the pointier version more, but this is something that you could do, for example. And there is a wrong side and a right side, but they don't look too different. So I'm not paying too much attention to what side I'm showing you, but <laughs> maybe one looks slightly better than the other, but not really. So yeah, you can just wear reversible without paying too much attention to what side you're facing outward. Yeah. It's a very simple pattern. That's exactly my intention. I really wanted something simple, versatile, easy to memorize. And as I mentioned, I'll put it up on Ravelry if you want to check it out, even if you're not coming to my class, but you want something very mindless and easy to knit on. It's also quite adjustable in terms of yarn weight. As you saw, I knitted one in a worsted weight yarn, which is the Line. This one is like the compatible cashmere is a lace weight yarn. I held it double to make it more of a finger in yarn. Gauge doesn't matter too much. And I think the final length that you are able to achieve doesn't matter too, too much. This is not a garment, so it doesn't have to fit a certain length or a certain width. It's a little tiny scarf. So I think it's okay if you don't have enough yardage to make like a full on long scarf. You can just make a teeny tiny dainty one. That was a roundup of finished objects. And to start off the work in progress, I'll just continue on the bandwagon of tiny scarf with eyelets. I'm making a third sample. Also, I'm using the word sample like if I was an actual designer and I'm loving it. Just fake it until you make it. I'm knitting a third sample and this is in a yarn that I don't know how to pronounce, sorry, the brand I don't know how to pronounce, but the yarn itself is called Tahiti and it's in a brownish color. I'm holding it double and I just got at the halfway point not too long ago, a couple of eyelets rows before where I am now and I'll just go do the decreases up until the other tip. This is the yarn. It's just a very pretty brown. It's 100% cotton and I bought it for camisoles. So maybe to do something like the cumulus top that I'm wearing. However, I found that when I swatched with it, it was very, very thin. It's thinner than knitting for olive pure silk or other fingering cotton yarns. And so I decided to hold it double and make it 
this third sample. I think it could look good with my hair color. I don't know if it's true. I'm also using this super pretty bag from Petit Knit. The size is very, very perfect for these tiny scarves. It would be perfect for socks as well if I was a sock knitter, but I'm not. So I'm using it for my, for my design. A bigger in progress object for you is the Field Day Jacket by Ozetta. It is very much work in progress in the sense that I even have a little hole in there that I didn't sewn up. This is behind the neck. I'll show you me wearing this in progress garment in a little bit. You know that I do that, so you'll see this on me in two minutes. But I'm knitting this at the same time as my friend Erin from the Korea Knits podcast. She sent me Cascade 220 in this very pretty straw color. At straw is the official name. I would call it like a harvest color. And we did a little swap. I guess we were meant to do a little swap where she sent me this and a few other gorgeous yarns. And I was meant to send her some of my yarn too, but my package never got to her, so I ended up giving her a gift card and a little bit of yarn from her local yarn store so she's using that yarn for her version of the field day jacket so this is a drop shoulder construction you can see here it's quite like it goes quite far into my upper arm i have the body on those cords barber cords so it's kind of pulling it a little bit, but you get the idea. And this is an in-progress garment anyway. So here I already picked up for the sleeve and I am going down this way. I'll go down this way and then I'll finish the body afterward. I don't know if I want to do a very, very long version, similar to what I've done for the Corin cardigan. Maybe I'll do it a bit shorter. But this is anyway meant to be a jacket, right? Like this is field day jacket. So I think even the intention of the original design is of a very oversized, long and chill cardigan. I think what I'd like this to be for me is an extra layer that I put on whenever I need to do like a quick errand outside. We will have a backyard in not too long, in a few months. So we bought a house last year, at the very end of last year, and it has a backyard. And so what I picture in my vision is that I'll be, I don't know, sipping on a cup of coffee in my backyard with this on top of my cardigan or sweater whatever i'm wearing that day and have this as a, like an extra layer to step outside in my backyard goals so i don't know if that will come into fruition but this is the vision the pattern is lovely the button band i didn't talk about this but it's knitted at the same time as the rest of the cardigan so with the same needles that you're using for the body you also do the button band and it is at the same time so i don't think you can have an easier construction for a cardigan or for a button band specifically so i'm really loving it i've tried to knit the oversized seasons cardigan by Ozetta a couple of months ago no more than that probably and the button band was knitted on different set of needles on deep ends actually compared to the rest of the body so you would knit a row on the body with the main circular needle and then you would switch to deep ends for the button band and it just killed my vibe as in like it killed the flow a little bit because you would switch so it wasn't as like mindless and going with the flow type knitting so i kind of abandoned it also i was using a super wash yarn that i wasn't enjoying very much so the combination of these two factors made it for like a frogging moment this time around button band is with the same needle as the rest of the body and it goes very smoothly so i plan to finish the sleeves this month we are in april right now so that maybe 
get to wear it once or twice before spring and summer come around. I'm very happy Erin suggested this pattern for us, for our two people knit along. By any means, if you want to knit a field day jacket with us, as in like at the same time, please join us. We're not doing an official knit along or anything, but you can bask in the comfort of knowing that we're also knitting the field day jacket at the same time as you are, if you want to join us. We're doing Cascade 220 field day jackets. That's it. I love the color too, so. I think I have very, very good feelings and hopes for this yarn, but so far I, I do understand the hype of the Cascade 220. And last work in progress is my half and half triangles wrap. This is not my first half and half triangles wrap and it won't be the last one. I'm done with the first half, which was this gray, but with a tinge of blue type of colorway. And I started the second triangle in the blue navy color, which I really like. I'm using actually a sock yarn. It's called Regia Premium Silk. For the first triangle, I used almost three bowls of the 100 grams. And so 300 grams more or less is like for CTV using more or less 300 grams of my second color. And one thing I noticed is that the two colorways actually feel quite different in terms of thickness of the yarn. And I don't think it's my mind playing tricks with me. I think it's actually true. I don't know how that can be possible. So the gray, it's quite plump and it's more thick. Well, this blue feels much thinner. I'm not sure. They have the same yardage, they are the same brand and the same type of yarn. They're just two different colorways. And Anna from Anna Passi Trevino finished her first and dare I say last ever half and half triangles wrap. And she actually used two colorways that were different because that's what you're meant to use in a half and half triangle wrap. You're meant to be using two different colorways. And her colorways and yarn in general is undyed. So from two different sheep. So it made sense that in her case, the two halves felt a little bit different because the yarn actually came from two different sheep. It makes sense that her two colorways could feel different, but my yarn is a commercial yarn that's definitely dyed. So maybe they change the process, how they make this yarn, or maybe it's just in my mind, or maybe the two colorways actually feel a little bit different. I have not washed any of this so maybe when i wash it they'll actually start feeling exactly the same because maybe this will bloom a little bit more with washing no idea but anyway why i said that this is probably anna's last half and half it's because i don't think it this pattern fits or suits everyone so you need to be the type of knitter that enjoys just miles and miles and miles of knitting like garter stitch back and forth Otherwise, you'll be very bored. And I'm so happy that she tried because I think the finished object is beautiful. It's so versatile. You can use it as a blanket. You can use it as a wrap. You can use it as a shawl, throw blanket type situation where you have it on your lap and you're working at your laptop. So versatile. I usually bring mine, the one that I already finished. I bring it on flights and it keeps me warm. So I'm happy that she has now a finished half and half wrap, but I also knew that that wasn't the pattern for her because she enjoys color work and more interesting constructions that kind of keep you on the edge of your knitting chair, so to speak. So in the spectrum, you need to think where you are between me, like the garter stitch lover, and Anna, as in I want to be entertained by my knitting pattern, where are you? Because I think based on your answer, I'll tell you if you will enjoy this pattern or not. If you do like garter stitch and you want to just be on your sofa knitting without paying too much attention, meaning that you're like me, 
I think this could be for you. This pattern could be for you. It's a free pattern. So you could actually just try it and see if you like it. If you don't, just rip it out after a few rows. That's always an option. And this was my last in-progress object for today. I have a teeny amount of acquisitions. They actually come from Lena from Knitting Time. She sent me a little box with some Sunday's Garlene. She bought this herself for a peacock tea. Um, she did try it and she didn't love it and she knew that I would love it so much, which I'm so happy about. And so she sent this to me and I did send her a gift card, which apparently is what I do when people send me yarn. And I think it's quite funny that the color that she chose is exactly the color I'm wearing. Should I do this? I think I should. Okay. It is a Sun is Garlene olive green party in here. And so she sent me six bowls, which will be enough for another peacock tea. I think that's what I'll be knitting with this quantity of yarn that she sent me. This was her intention for herself to knit a peacock tea. And this is a pattern that I truly, really love. And so I think that's exactly what I'll be doing, knitting another peacock tea in Lena's honor. And in the box that she sent me, she also sneaked in a good amount of gummy candies, like gummy bears type candies. I don't know what's the proper name for them. Is gummy candies the right one? But I think you understood like gummy licorice and sweets and that type. And I ate the entire bag in just a few days. Delicious. However, there's one thing that she sent in there that has not been consumed in the month since I received the box. So I think you can tell that I didn't love it. I'm sorry, Lena, <laughs> and people who enjoy this type of candy. This is a salty licorice. It's licorice, but like with salt dust. I'm sorry. I enjoyed everything else, yarn and gummy candies included, just not these ones. And that will be it for today. I really appreciate you sticking around and I hope you enjoyed the time you spent while watching this video. I hoped you made some progress if you were working on something or just relaxed a little bit if you were just there with a drink and your thoughts. I will see you very soon. Bye friends.